Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Um, today we're going to be working again with Dancing Poppies from the Alta New Build a Garden kit for March. But yesterday I used the stencils from the kit and on the live and um, I used ink and their um, mini blending brushes and I colored these with the stencils. And they turn and I die cut them with the dies that came in it and they turned out really pretty. I love them. But here's the thing, and we're gonna talk about this in a minute. I got an email this morning, just this morning, from a local garden um, place that you can go visit, walk, you know, I have to pay, but called Longwood Gardens, and it is called Blue Poppies in Bloom. And apparently these are pretty rare. Um, let's see what it says. Meconop Meconopsis Lingholm. They it flowers every year um, in March. And they kind of force it. They have like a, um, I forget what it's, conservatory, arboretum kind of thing. Look at these blue poppies. Aren't they gorgeous? So I decided I need to play with them again, but this time I'm going to use the um, Alta New Cool Summer Night um, blue colors of their alcohol markers. So we're going to stamp the image and I'm going to do my best to color it. And I did notice they have a little bit of pink or purple in them and they have yellowish and green centers. So I'll bring in some other colors as need be. And then we're probably going to also make a card. I might um, do some ink brushing. Uh, I don't know if I'll use the greens I got from Altenew or my Stampin' Up! just because they're out and they're easy. But it also has some purple in the background. But I also thought then I would use this My Favorite Things. Um, what is this called? I think it's like a basket weave. Basket weave stencil. So I thought I'd color the background, then color this onto it, or I'll dig for some paper. We'll see when I get that far. Um, so to bring in the purple or, or whatever in the center there, just a little bit, the one in my email looked more, I actually clicked on the um, website to get the picture up. If you are ever in southeastern Pennsylvania, I actually highly encourage you to visit Longwood Gardens during... Um, anytime really, but spring, summer, and fall are just beautiful. Conservatory is beautiful all year round because they always have something. Um, there is some construction going on on one end of the conservatory, so it's not all open as far as I know, unless it, I don't think it's finished yet because I was just there in um, early winter. But um, yeah, we, my daughter, I gave her a membership, her and her family, so they can go and every now and then I get invited to go with them. <laughs> Amy, if you watch this, which I doubt, <clears throat> um, we need to go to Longwood in the next 10 to 14 days because that's all they expect that these will be in bloom. Anyway, so that is uh, my inspiration for, oh, I shut that and I really want to, well, I'll open it back up again once um, we're there because I want to go over what happened yesterday. My, my video, I don't know why, when I got up with the microphone in hand, somehow my live ended abruptly. And I don't know why that happened. I thought if I took my microphone with me just outside my door, there's a cabinet where I needed to get my other um, Stampin' Up! ink cubes. Um, I don't know. It just went blank. So I apologize for that, for, to the, for that, for everyone that was on my live. So... We used a different stamp set for this. This is called their um, Cafe Ole Dahlia, which is a mini delight kit. I think it's $9.99 a month plus shipping, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, this used the Altenew, um ink cubes called uh, Spring Bouquet. And it has these pinks and greens in it. And that's what I used on here, which is also what I used for the brushing, which turned out beautifully. But uh, uh, these are solid stamps and I just did not, I wasn't happy with how that 
I mean, the more I look at it, it looks a little better, but I wasn't super happy with that. So then I thought, what if I use a Stampin' Up full-size ink pad? And I picked Melon Mambo. And without a soft mat under it, I got these results. It got better the second time. And then the third time, I put a cushion under it, and voila, it turned out okay. Now, the, my particular stamp has a little white a little bubble in it so I get this little white spot but otherwise the inking turned out fine with a full-size ink pad Stampin' Up ink dye-based ink and then these are Stampin' Up Garden Green the two leaves so then I tried the all to new with a cushion and you can I don't know if you can see I actually was rubbing it over the stamp and I was getting all these swirly lines basically I don't think small ink cubes work for solid stamps as well so then I thought well let's try it again with the cushion right this and um, this was the darker magenta ink cube and it turned out a little better with it not smearing it around it still has the little white spot but you still get some dots in it so then I thought, and, and same with the leaves, they still had some dots in it, and that was in uh, one of their greens. So then I thought, I'm not being fair because I'm using a full ink pad for Stampin' Up and cubes for all to new. So I got out the cubes, that's when I got up to go get the cubes. I used Polish Pink and Just Jade, which is a retired color. And look, I also got the dots with the cubes. Um, the leaves did better they're a smaller surface to cover um, and I have never these were brand new never opening cubes just like these had been brand new before I did the poppies so my um, conclusion is when you use a solid stamp not a not a outline one like like this is an outline one if you use a solid stamp use a full-size ink pad I think you definitely get better oops better more full coverage this was like one one stamp and um from stampin up full size ink pad both of them on a cushion on a cushion for photopolymer stamps use some kind of a cushion all right or your stamping platform okay um and preferably with a cushion in all right so that's enough about that all right so i have a piece of um let me see what the name of this paper is. It is a white cardstock called uh, Classic Crest Solar White, 25 sheets, and I bought it on Altenew. It doesn't say Nina, so it's Altenew brand, but that's what we're using. I cut it into a couple pieces. Um, this is six inches by eight and a half you need at least six inches i probably could turn it this way and get two maybe i'll do that actually and then this is um four by five and a quarter and this is what was left so which i can use for i think this is a nice heavy weight card stock so that's what we're using to color and i do think i'm going to try turning this around so that maybe i can get two just in case i mess up right I don't know if there's a right and wrong side of this or not let me see if that's going to be long enough nope I'll turn it the other way I don't want to risk that so back to where we were <laughs> all right so we're going to use um I need something to put under the stamparatus thing that'll work I'm going to use Alta News Crisp Jet Black Ink. Yesterday in my live, I said I think it's very similar to Memento as far as the qualities. It's a dye-based ink. It's good for using with alcohol markers. The pad does fray a little bit like Memento's pad. So, and we probably will have to do this twice. I have a bad habit, I think, of swiping it. I don't know. Do any of you do that? Is that really bad? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I have my favorite, one of my favorite little tools here. A hockey puck, air hockey puck, I mean. 
<laughs> that was gifted to me. Yeah, see, we need to do more for sure, especially over here. But we're going to do the whole thing again. Maybe sliding it makes it fray. I don't know. I'm fairly, you know, I'm using products that are new to me. But, and I thought I was going to be doing jewelry making today, but when I got that email, I was like, no, I have to do more with the poppies. All right, more over here. I'm not getting it inked good over here. Mm. My little thing. And I think, honestly, I think my desk kind of dips in a little in the middle or something because... I seem to always have trouble getting coverage in certain spots. So that is a possibility as well. I don't know. Oh, and I got a fuzzy on there. And that's from the ink pad, I think. But that looks mm, good enough. I, got, I, I see it's leaving little, I, there's a fuzzy on my stamp now. But I think that's good enough for coloring. Um, so we're going to put this over here. I am actually going to get my chamois, which is drying out, but it still has a little liquid on it. A little, um, moisture. I don't want to use a baby wipe because it already has fuzzies on it. And, um, I don't want to risk, yeah, getting more fuzzies on the paper. Okay. All right, so let me pull this off. I did have my foam mat from Stampin' Up under there too. I have to clean that more later because that didn't get it very, it's a little too dry. All right, let me move that out of the way. And let's, um, let's get these out in color. So the numbers, these um, Alton New Markers, similar to Copics, they are numbered. Uh, with color numbers and they have the names on them and the colors are listed on the back of the box so this is B201 and it is called sea glass I don't know if I'm going to use that because it looks I might just use ocean wave I don't know maybe we will B204 which is ocean waves let me check yes um, B 373 which is dusk I'm sorry 313 which is dusk and B227 which is desert night actually I want to bring that photo over here real quick uh, one second I don't think I want to use the darkest one I think we'll just use the others um, yeah, so let's try that and a little bit of, um, now this was, this was out of a different collection, um, and it is R603, and it's called, uh, well, I can't read that, Puffy Heart, I think, and it says it's from Set D, and Set D was, I don't know, I can't remember which one. What the name of that was but it's Altenew has sets A through I think K um, so I'm gonna set my phone over here all right um, actually I'm gonna start with the dark this time the darker one which is dusk and I'm gonna start with that in towards the middle um, trying to decide whether I want, I'm going to use the brush end actually this time. And maybe I'll put the purple in. Actually, you know what, let me, let me do the, um, pinky purple and, and a yellow. I need a yellow. Hmm. And let me also get a sheet of paper. Whoops. <laughs> I need a new holder for my all to new markers now. All right, let me get a sheet of paper, put it under here, because I'm going to need to test some of these that I've never used before. I think that'll work for the centers. So we're going to, we're going to go in and do these centers in yellow first. So I don't get confused and 
do them in some other color. I still think there's little fuzzies on here. Oh well. And actually what I might do, because this could end up being a long video otherwise, is I might try putting this uh, sped up into um, music a little bit. And this one is open and I'm going to come in and just go around here with some of this pinky purple color, purpley pink called, what I say, puppy hearts? <laughs> it's like a pinky purple. Okay. And maybe just a little bit on some of these two that are open a lot. I don't, I don't think I'll put it on that one, but this one's open, so I'll put some on here too. Okay, so that's that one. Um, now, and that's that one, which I'll put back in its place. Okay, um, now let me check these blues as well. This is the darker blue. That's a pretty color. And that's called um, Ocean Waves. And this one is the lighter one called sea glass, I believe. Yes, those are the two we're going to use. I'm just going to use two because we already have the pink. Um, so let's start with the dark one and do a little shading here. And then we'll blend it out with the lighter one. And I'll do one flower at a time because I want to be sure that I um, get it, I'm able to blend it well, hopefully. I don't know if, like with the Stampin' Up! ones, we were always told go circular motion to blend. I'm also going to try outward strokes. I feel like I'm getting some black ink smudging in there a little bit. And I shouldn't be but I do think it is bleeding a little bit in there from the alcohol. Hmm. So I might do these again using uh, Memento. Although I have had problems with that lately. I might actually try the Gina K Amalgam ink, which is supposed to be good for both. Maybe it would be better to color um, first with the light and then add the dark. But that is definitely bleeding when I went over the line with it. Hmm. Well, they sure don't look quite as pretty as the, <laughs> as the picture. And I want to see something. I want to check a different color. This is um, Mountain Mist. It's more of a green blue though. I don't think that'll work. No, that's too green. That was a different set. I just it was in front of me and I wanted to check. All right, so on the next one, I'm going to try the lighter color first and color in the whole flower. And then I'll come back with the dark and see how that, and then go over it again a little bit with the light and see how that works.
so I am fairly new to I've colored with alcohol markers but um, honestly before I was a, de a demonstrator with Stampin Up and starting in 2000 mid 2018 I had only played around with spectrum noir markers and only a little bit and um, so I didn't really have a chance to practice with them a whole lot before I change and then I've been only using Stampin' Blends which are they come in sets of two. Now they are alcohol markers um, and they come in yeah they come in a light and a dark per per set based on the ones they have available. Now if they retire color if the markers go away you know that is one bit of a disadvantage. All right, so there it is light. Now let's bring in the dark. And um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some dark down in here. Um, and maybe down here. I don't know if I'll put it as thick up at the top here. And then also maybe just some in a few places here. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in the lighter color again and see if I did better this time. Let's see. I hope so. <laughs> let's see that one's still pretty wet so let's try that yeah that is blending a little better you know what let me try the the nib end instead because some of these spots are a little smaller I think I like it better with the nib end for blending I do need to watch more videos and practice with this, but I'm just kind of bringing you along for my new kind of crafty journey. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes, right? And put some blue over that purple as well. I think it does definitely work better putting the lighter color down first and then um, the dark and then blending it out. Um, and I also think the nib end works better for doing that. And I'm not going all the way out to the edge of that particular petal because that'll give it more, since there's already a layer of light there, it'll give it more of a light finish. I'm going to let that sit a little bit and see if I like it. Now this, um, yeah, definitely the lines bled. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. That is truly disappointing. Okay, so let's, um, we're just going to keep going. I mean, that looks really pretty to me, except I have circles here. This is the same light, but with the brush end, I guess I will go out to the edge a little more because I'm really not. Okay, I'm overthinking as I tend to do. <laughs> all right. So I don't know if all these will go on a card because I'm not liking how that's bleeding. 
So hopefully some of the other ones I'll, I'll stop the bleeding and I can use them. Right? Stop the bleeding. Don't go over the lines. I'm using the brush end to color the larger areas. On the poppies in the um, picture that I have from Longwood Gardens, um, it not only has that center part, but it actually has the little stamen coming out from it in a green. It's like yellow in the center and then stamen in the green. I don't think I'm going to put as much dark blue on this one. And I think I'm going to put it on with, oops, with the brush tip. Just a little bit down in here. It's a really dark blue compared to the to the rest, even though it's only one one uh, one color family away. Just a little bit along here. Okay. Now let's use the nib end and try and blend that out a little bit. Okay, and then back to the brush end, oh no, let's put a little bit of purple, um, purpley pink, let me put the um, brush end, and just along here a little bit, maybe not quite so even as I did before, right, just a little touch of purple. And then brush end. Nope. Um, is this the lightest one? Yeah. Yep. I didn't even check to see if Altenew sells like replacement ones. Um, well, I'm sorry. They sell replacement nibs and they do sell um, ink. Um, alcohol marker refills so as long as they have them in stock um, you shouldn't need to replace the actual marker is what I'm trying to say which is nice I had a um, the Stampin' Up! ones are not refillable so you just if you run out of them you just have to buy a whole nother set and their sets are nine dollars for two which is 450 a marker and that's approximately, I think these are right around four a marker, four to 450, uh, depending on the set and whether they're, and then if you get them on sale, like I did two of the sets I got, they're like $2 a marker on sale when you get a good sale, you know, somewhere between, actually, I think it was like $1.68 for two of the sets I got per marker, which that's really a good price. Um, so... All right, I'm going to use again, just, um, I almost feel like I'm 
kind of ruining it with this darker blue. But they had shades of blue in them, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, you know? Just there. Maybe there. Okay. And then bring the light back in with the nib end and fill that out. And I, like I said, by no means am I an expert colorist or coloring person. I'm just on a journey to learn a little bit because I do like coloring, especially I like coloring with alcohol markers, but we'll also be using uh, watercolors in the future, watercolor pencils and watercolors or watercoloring with inks because I have ink refills and other sorts of mixed media things too. And you do know that alcohol ink markers will go through your paper. <laughs> I hope you know that. Don't ever do this right on the front of a card. Use a mat and then attach it to your card base. Okay. Um, I seem to have... Oh, I, okay. I had three of these out and one of those. Okay, let's find some greens. Um, let me see how bright their greens are. Lighter or darker? Sort of dark. Sort of dark. So I'm thinking I'm going to use this one and this one. And these are out of set E. Uh, let's test them. This one's called Grass Field G515, and this one's called Shadow Creek uh, G425, but I want to test them first. So this is the darker of the two. It is quite dark, but that's actually, they have used dark. And yeah, I think I'm going to like both of these. Um, so I think I'm going to do the same. I'm going to color in. I'm not crazy about that ink. I need to clean my stamp really good next time. Um, it left little speckles. Um, so I might have residue ink from um, yesterday if I didn't get it clean enough. I'm not sure. And I guess I'm going to have to do these one at a time because I want to be able to, that was the, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> the lighter of the two. So we're just going to come in and just kind of blend a little bit down here on the underside. Although some of their undersides in the picture, they actually have lighter. Okay. All right. If this is the spare leaf, we'll use that with that flower. 
So what do you think? I think, not bad. Um, I'm thinking I need a little more dark blue on this one. Uh, let's see. Which one was the darkest one? The darkest one I don't have. Which one is dusk? This is dusk. So, so I think I'm just going to try... Um, ocean waves, yeah. A little bit more ocean waves under under here. And under here. And then bring in the light one. Okay, let's let that dry and see how that looks. A little smeary with the black ink. Um, I'm going to pause it and cut these out, and then we're going to do the background for the card. I'll be right back. Here's how they came out. I did get a little white on them. I'm going to snip this leaf off, so I'm going to trim away some of that white anyway. But I did get a little too much white under this, so I'm actually going to fussy cut that too. This one usually, I guess I had them too much to one side, but it didn't, I'm, I'm having trouble telling. It's probably user error, and we'll fix that soon. I know I still have a piece over there. Oops. Don't cut the stem off, Deb. One second. <laughs> I'm not good at fussy cutting. I really do not like it. So forgive me for that if you're one who loves it, but I just do not. <laughs> I don't want to cut the stem, which I might have just done. There we go. And let's cut that a little more roundish there. And here. Well, this is probably the one I said I wasn't. No, I might be. The, I don't know. Okay, I guess might be the one I said I wasn't going to use because it blurred too much. But it is what it is. I have this problem. Um, and I, I guess it's probably me, user error, I, um, even on, you know, some of the Stampin' Up! ones, the white along one side or the other, and I seem to have to trim them down. Maybe my eyes are just crooked when I put them on the plate. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, well. Okay. Um, let me get a few of these off of here. Um, now this one, I kind of like the coloring. Eh, maybe not. I think we'll use these three on a card. Just these three. This one has too much white. And I don't feel like cutting that much off. This one has quite a bit too, but it's a pretty flower. So I'll deal with it. Right? We deal with it when it's pretty. I was going to make a joke about something about my appearance, but I guess I won't. So I'll probably cut some of this out too because you don't need to watch me struggle with fussy cutting, right? Um, so probably I'll 
shut it off now and I'll be back when I'm done trimming. Okay, everybody, I'm back and I fussy cut uh, around them, three of them, as best I could. I still have this blue one and this leaf that I didn't fussy cut. I might just use that flower, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't think I will, actually. So we're going to go with Plan B. And I'm going to bring in a blending brush, two blending brushes. And um, I'm going to use greens and um, <laughs> what I'm trying to see, I think I'm going to use pear pizzazz from Stampin' Up. And oh gosh, I have embossing powder here still. Um, and a pink in the background. And I think I'll use polished pink for that. Okay, and maybe some some blue. Um, and I'll go with uh, Tahitian Tide because I think that yeah, it's a little darker. Mm, maybe Coastal Cabana would go. Not really. I like the other one better. All right, let me bring Tahitian Tide. I'll just um, rub off a little bit. Um, all right, I need a blue thing also. Let me do the pink first. I just want a little bit of pink in the background. Maybe in a couple spots. Man, what is it with me and ink these days? All right, that's good enough. Um, so that was polished pink by Stampin' Up. And now I need a blue brush and I'm going to do a little bit of um, whatever this color is, Tahitian Tide. Yes. Oops. Did I use the wrong blending brush? No. Okay. Whew. All right. I'm going to use a little bit of Tahitian Tide down here and maybe up here. This representing like a poppy in the background. And that representing more sky. Okay. And then uh, the rest will be filled in with green representing flowers in the background. <laughs> I mean leaves in the background and grass and whatever, plant material. You know, sort of like a watercolor painting kind of thing without watercolor, right? And this is, what I say, pear pizzazz. Yeah, I picked the right color. I didn't want it to be overpowering to the, um, to the design. Okay, so my thought process is I want to put maybe some kind of a lattice on here. Well, everyone, here's where I'm at. I have to glue it together. I remembered I had the split card textures dies from Stampin' Up! in their annual catalog that goes through April of this year. And um, I just die cut another piece of, actually it was a scrap of white from the bottom of doing the poppies. And um, so I used that, but it does not cut out this edge, so I fussy cut that because I wanted it to look more like a trellis. And then I think I'm going to have a cluster here of the poppies, three poppies. And um, I then I think um, we'll have a sentiment up here and I haven't decided on that yet. I always put the sentiment at the bottom, but you know you don't have to do that, right? So I'm going to take these two off momentarily. And I'm going to glue the outer edges of this down, but I'm going to kind of leave some of this trellis 
uh, go. And let me take this off of here because I'm done coloring for now. Um, luckily, this glue hopefully will come out um, along the edge here. Yeah. So we'll glue just the edge down. And um, I feel like I need more. I'll put more on. And I might put some just across the center. But I don't want to put too much down at the bottom because I'm going to be tucking. Um, I'm going to be tucking in in a couple spots. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oops. All right, let's try and carefully get this lined up with the edge. She says, this is the person that can't line things up straight. Okay, can we get it? I think I pretty good, not quite, almost. Pretty good, a little bit off, not bad. All right, now we'll take this one. I'm going to tuck it in through the trellis. And then I'm going to glue the leaves down and part of this stem. And we'll have that go up like that. And I think I will glue this whole flower down. There. Now this one, actually, maybe I shouldn't have glued that whole stem. There we go. Do I want that tucked under there? Maybe. Maybe it's stuck. It's stuck. There we go. So I was going to have this kind of going like here on top of there. Or maybe I'll have it go over this way. And then this one can maybe tuck under here, but, or pop this up perhaps. Actually, I might cut this little doohickey off and I might pop this one up over the top. So I might have, oh, actually, I think I need a stem over this way. Let me pull this back out. I don't like that tucked under there. <clears throat> this is why everything takes me so long. Um, Trying to think how I how I had it the first time. I had it over this way. And then this I can maybe pop up here. That's what I'll do. Yeah, that's what I did. Alright, so actually I need a dimensional um for the flower that's off that flower. Dimensional or two. Definitely one there. And maybe one here. All right, I'm going to put it down. My foot's a little too much sometimes. All right, and then let's glue these leaves down. And then we'll snip that bottom stem off of here. Okay, I don't know where that went, but okay. And then this one, I think we'll tuck, 
tuck under and glue. But I have a little white here that I'm not happy with. Still. So we'll snip that off. Yep, we're going to tuck that right under there. Now I just have to decide on a sentiment and whether I want to stamp it right up here. So I'll be back. Isn't that pretty so far though? Gorgeous. You can see in a minute. Hello everybody, I'm back. I picked out um, a birthday sentiment from this Go To Greetings, this Happy Birthday here. There's also these really fancy ones, but I thought if this, this has, I don't have the sticker on, right? Just so you know. But if we just have this going across here, and I'm going to stamp it on a little bit bigger paper here, and then I might um, fussy cut it out. I don't know. I'm going to try and use archival ink, jet black. This is an old stamp pad I didn't even know I had until after I bought a new one. And I went to put this in a drawer, the other one, and found out I had this one. So, mm, yeah. <laughs> Such is the life of Ms. Deb here. So let's see how we do with that. Okay, pretty good. So that's by Ranger, and it is, so I have to let it dry. Um, it's waterproof, so it has to be like a pigment ink. Waterproof, permanent, and acid-free. It's a it dye ink, but huh, I don't know. Um, all right, yeah, I think I'm going to fussy cut it because I don't like how wide that is. So I'm going to do that off camera again. I'll be back. Okay, everyone. I actually ended up stamping it again with my newer archival ink pad because this one looked a little blah. After I fussy cut it, I realized this really looks more like gray and I didn't like it on the card. So I did this one and I am going to bump this up one little mini dimensionals. And then I have the other half of the sheet of Nina that I was using for the backgrounds I made into a card base. It is a nice heavyweight um, cardstock. I think it's probably 110 pound, but I am not sure. I just know it seems heavier to me than some other thick cardstocks I've used recently. Um, so I'm going to put these little mini dimensionals in a few spots on here. I might have to actually even cut one in half somewhere so it doesn't show so far so good. And maybe one there. I use a few extras usually, you know. Is that showing? Maybe. Um, the wrapper slid off and I got okay I kind of feel like I want one in here too one more yeah because it's a thin strip and I don't really want it getting caught on anything you know that's how I roll I just have to be able to get the paper off <laughs> uh, deb 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 so I apologize if the, vid the video is too long for you. Let me see where I want it. Maybe about here. Down a little bit. That's straight. Not entirely. All right. I think there we will do it. How's that? 
And then I was originally thinking of putting it on a different color backing first, but I'm not going to. I kind of like it just on the white. Isn't that pretty? I like it. I'm happy with the card. I hope you are. I have to figure out what I'm going to do on the inside. Maybe I'll just fussy cut and have just the flower. Maybe I'll just have the flower. I don't know yet. Um, we'll see. On the inside. <laughs> I think I will. Um, so that's really, well, let's figure that out. I might as well finish the card while I have you with me, right? And um, so, yeah, I was happy with this. I don't know if I did the best blending jobs, but hey, I'm learning. And I think they look pretty. They don't look exactly like the picture, but um, let me get the picture back up. There's my Longwood Gardens blue pictures. These are a different shade of blue. They're more of um, the ocean colors of blue, I guess, instead of the regular medium, light and medium blue. But I still think they're pretty. I think I, I got the centers perfect. <laughs> they have a little dot that looks like the stamen, right? And a little bit of pinky purple in there, like that one has. Um, yeah, I don't think it's too bad. They might have a little more coming out into the, like a little more striping. Huh. Oh, well, you know, I think I'm learning and I did pretty good. And I might put a few um, pearls or something on. I think just basic pearls, maybe. But let's figure out the inside. It's a heavy cardstock, so I don't feel like I need a whole lot. I think I'm trying to avoid doing too much fussy cutting, but I think I'm going to have to do some. I think I'm going to fussy cut it to about here. And, um, and glue it in, and then I'll show you the final result. Okay, here is my finished card. I just put three basic pearl gems on there. Um, the colored background with the dye I said from Stampin' Up. The Alta New Build a Garden Poppies, uh, Poppy Fields, I forget the name of it. Dancing Poppies, Dancing Poppies, which I colored in with their alcohol markers being from this Cool Summer Night set. I just used sea glass and ocean waves. Um, I used a pink out of another set called Puppy Heart, purpley pink, and a yellow, which I've already put away. I don't remember the number. And the greens were from one of their four pack sets and they were um, they're from the Sunshine Valley Garden set and they were Grass Field and Shadow Creek. Um, so that's what I did and then I die cut them and they cut out in one, two, three, four and an extra leaf piece that I've I actually didn't color and tossed in the trash. So I really like it. I think it came out very pretty and uh, I hope you do too. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on my journey of discovering how to do things a little differently and uh, I will talk to you again very soon. Bye for now.